I mean, I don't have no man, but I don't know how I'm at when I get one, but I don't think I'm gonna be kicking one as fine as Daniel out. Hey y'all, hey, it's Queen Beauty here and welcome to my channel. Today's video is going to be another Insecure review um, on the episode. It's season three, episode two, and it is, the episode is titled Familiar Like. So I'm just gonna get straight into it. I'm not gonna beat around the bush. This the last um episode i reviewed was super duper long and this time i'm going to be on point i'm gonna be a lot quicker <laughs> not really my talk through will not be as long that's why i did a little bit of my makeup ahead of time so that way i won't be going for so long and i just wanted some candy y'all so y'all might get a little smacking in this video Y'all gonna get a little me doing my makeup in this video. And y'all gonna get me talking about my little, my feelings and what I got from the episode of Insecure. So just keep watching so you can see the future look and hear about what I'm about to talk about. <laughs> and I know y'all wondering about my hair, but I'm gonna have a video up on it real, real soon real soon so the episode starts off i left my mirror at home too this is my new place and uh, i don't really have everything in here and i don't have everything unpacked so it's kind of crazy but you know i'll get into it i'll get better <laughs> i will fix this <laughs> y'all don't see how a mess it looks right now but i will fix this but anyways so um, this episode of Insecure really focused on Daniel for me. Like, that's what I got a lot of Daniel from it. Like, I didn't get that much of Issa. And I was fine. I mean, I didn't get that much of, you know, the other characters like Molly. I got a little bit of Issa, but mostly it was like Daniel. And if it was Issa, Issa was focused on Daniel, it felt like it. So... I kind of, when I first started watching it, I was like, ugh, I don't want to watch this all about Daniel. Like, I don't care about him that much. But I kept through it, and eventually I really, I came out really liking the episode, and I'm going to tell y'all why later. But, so the first scene basically jumps right in to Issa is at work, and she is texting Daniel. And she's texting him, and she's just like she ends up asking him like oh hey i haven't seen you in a while is everything okay but in my head i'm like okay she asking him that because she said something about it's been a couple of days and i'm like dang obviously it's been a couple of days because he's weirded out like it was a very awkward situation it was a very awkward situation from it wasn't their last scene but it was just an awkward situation from them and their um their not kiss and when she backed away from the kiss and then for her to later on tell him you know her feelings it made everything awkward and i can understand why he was avoiding going home but it's his home so i don't know why he ain't at home because i sure would be anything Issa would be somewhere else so he ends up replying back oh everything's all cool it's it's whatever i'm fine so also during that moment in time she is looking up Issa is looking up apartments she's apartment hunting and whatnot and so she ends up not really finding anything i guess and that's that's the end of that little scene the next scene comes in and finally finally her job her boss joanne i finally remembered her name or figured it out because they did say it a couple times but in this episode but finally joanne realizes like sis yes the logo is racist the saying the the everything seems a little racist but once she explains like oh it's not okay what i got from them saying it was racist and what i got from seeing like oh it's racist was 
it's a white hand holding out for black people or whatever so it's kind of like what did I say it's kind of like like black people always gonna need the white man for help like the white man has to offer you help for you to get somewhere like that's that's how it came off racist for me and when Joanne explained for her her thought process was like oh you know it's my hand now <laughs> not all white people are racist and that's another thing that a lot of people gotta like remember but it's her hand reaching out like as a helping hand that's what she was saying like it's me helping others like I want to help them and then also I, I didn't think about like we got y'all like she was right saying like why do the black kids why are we only helping brown and black kids and why are we saying we got y'all that's grammatically incorrect and that's true like if a black person said that like if i a black person created this organization to help other black kids and it said we got y'all everybody would look be looking at me like why did you do that like why did you have to be that person to name it that <laughs> like it just it just doesn't seem mm, it just don't seem right like it don't seem good and I can under, I don't like it I don't like it but I, I think it don't matter who say it it don't matter whose whose title like company name it is it's just it just doesn't sound right and it just needs I don't know it just, it just ain't right so they addressed that and then in that moment one of the girls she was like um she was like well whatever Issa says we need to go with and everybody looked at Issa and Issa was like well I think y'all made uh, valid points blah 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 and that's all she said and then they just went back to arguing and I'm just like Issa that was your chance sis that was your chance to speak up for all of us speak up for us and and help help them help them realize their ways because a lot of the time some people just don't know like some people don't know when they're being mm, do some people don't know when they're being racist is that a real thing like do people not know when they're being racist or are they always being racist i don't know some people that just don't understand i guess I can give them the benefit of the doubt, but I don't know. Um, but for Joanne, I feel like she wasn't on purposely being racist. It was just what she thought worked at that moment and at that time. So yeah, but let's see what was next. I don't know, Issa had her moment to speak up and she didn't. It was her moment to take charge and show that she had some kind of initiative and she did it. And it just goes back to her not just being insecure in her job because at that moment she was like, oh, now y'all want to be fake woke when I've been on alarm clock the whole time. Like, why didn't you say that out loud instead of saying it in your mind? Sis, speak up. Do it. You know? So the next scene, all you see is Daniel and his niece. Um and they're listening to music and then you see um his his friend or whatever the dude's name i don't know i don't remember what his name is but he's basically like telling daniel oh um spider flaked on us he not coming and we need to meet up with him at the at the club and daniel's like oh man i don't like that club scene blah 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 but he was like, I'll, you'll be with me so we can go to the club, we can talk to old dude, and we can get him to come on the track, basic. Like, Daniel had been working on this music for the dude to change up his sound, and the dude ended up not showing up, and now that's why they're going to go to the club to go meet up with him and meet him. So that's basically it. And the next scene... Issa is with her friend Kelly and they're basically just talking about like her finances and everything that's going on. And it was really funny because <laughs> Kelly was like, <laughs> no, first Issa, <laughs> Kelly was like, your credit score is bad. It's bad. 
and it was like 419 I need to look up my credit score I need to figure that out um but since Issa's credit score is so bad Issa was like I've been saving I've been saving and she was like mm -hmm, you've been saving okay okay we gonna see and so she gave her the paper and she was like nah 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 you ain't been saving and Issa talking about but you know I eat out a lot and <laughs> listen that is me y'all I eat out all the time today was the first day that I did not eat out and you know what I ate a peanut butter sandwich that's what I be eating when I don't eat out woo, 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 woo. So they were just talking about uh, her finances and how she don't be, uh, she be eating out too much. And it was funny because Kelly was looking through her expenses and whatnot. And she was like, girl, um, you be spending that Rite Aid? What you, you be buying groceries at Rite Aid? And then it made me think about how like in the first season, in like, I think it was like the first episode or the second episode, where Issa was running away from um, Lawrence and she was buying panties out of the right age. And I was like, oh my gosh, look at them. Look at that little mini reference to the first season. This is so cute. It's so funny. Look how long, look how far Issa has come. This is not that far, but you know, she ain't made it nowhere. She just don't have Lawrence no more. Okay, so the next part, basically, um, you see Issa call her brother and she's just trying to be all nice with him because I guess in the last episode or in the last, yeah, in the last episode, Issa told Daniel that she was going to be out in a week. And so she's trying to figure out her way of getting that because getting that or making that happen because Kelly just told her she can't move out. She can't move by herself. Her finances are not in order and she won't be able to afford it. So that's why she calls her brother. Her brother basically turns her down, basically saying like, nah, you're off up, sis. My man growing some weed in the in the back, in the room or something like that, he says. And yeah, that was that was about it for that part. Um so basically Issa is just out of options. Sis don't have no more no options. So um, she ends up applying for a job as a property manager, which she leaves a message for them and then she gets on the elevator and then that's her scene, that's it. So now we're on to Daniel. And y'all, when I tell you, we finally see Vanessa face. And I'm telling you, now that I think about it, I don't think that was Vanessa in the first, first episode in the beginning because Vanessa look real light skinned now and she wasn't light skinned in the beginning unless it was the lighting comment down below if y'all think that was Vanessa in the very very beginning I really don't think it was her I don't but yeah so uh, him and Vanessa just talking looking on the computer and whatnot. and what I got from that scene was basically that well, basically, Vanessa was saying like, oh, uh, you've been over here for a while, for three days, you know, what's going on? You don't got no other girls to, you know, hang out with? And he was like, no, I, I got homegirl at the house and I'm trying to give her her space. And Vanessa was like, well, you got to give homegirl no space because I'm trying to go out tomorrow. <laughs> I was like, uh-uh. So basically what I got from that was that they're not a couple and uh, yeah, they're not together. So I don't know what, what made it seem like, I don't know what gave me the impression that that was his girlfriend. And I think it's because of his conversation with his sister. Cause I don't know. I don't think Vanessa thinks that. I think Vanessa was trying to get rid of him. And you don't do that with the man, with a man that looks like Daniel, with a man that was putting it down like Daniel, and with the man like Daniel that has a job. I don't know. And you don't want him in your house and you want some space? I don't know. I mean, I don't have no man, but I don't know how I'm at when I get one, but I don't think I'm going to be kicking one as fine as Daniel out. Talking about I need some space. 
I mean, I might get tired of you after a while, but not three days. <laughs> and if anything, if I was her, I would be mad that homegirl is at his place. So, I don't know. And then something that she said, I didn't really... I don't know, she was looking at something and I think it was like Lonzo Ball or Lonzo, I think she said Lonzo, I don't remember, but regardless, she said something and then she was like, oh, light skin love, I love that, or something like that she said, what did she say? Oh, she was like, I love light skin love, and I was like, when you got that fine, dark, chocolate man sitting on your bed you talking about you love light skin love shut up shut up immediately don't say nothing else like girl what are you talking about but i guess it's okay it's whatever that just that part i don't know why she i don't know why they, i know they put that in there for a certain reason but it was just like dang mm, okay whatever girl so the next scene is lunchtime and it's Frida and the other co-workers and Issa all sitting at the table and Frida just brings up how like she felt like Joanne was being a little defensive when they were talking about the logo and the slogan finally I couldn't think of the word slogan for the longest and I've been saying just logo but anyways <laughs> She felt like she came off a little defensive and I can understand, I, 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 I got that from the little part that we saw. So, since her intentions were good, she couldn't really see that it was racist, I guess. Frida basically says that she felt she doesn't want uh, We Got Y'all to come off as tone deaf and it, she doesn't want that to affect their funding. So basically this is when this white girl the one with the short little bangs called out Issa and was just like you know if people are getting affected by like the tone deafness of the organization then some people should speak up to try to help basically it was her targeting Issa saying that Issa you had your chance to speak up and talk on black people and basically say like oh yeah this is messed up or this is racist just to let them know at least so you can fix things but that's when Issa jumped to the point like I don't want to be the spokesperson for every black person but since you have to be the spokesperson for every black person because guess what there's only one black person that works there it's only you sis it's nobody else so who's gonna do it and then <sighs> Then that's when the gay dude, he was like, but I speak up for the gays, which was a valid point. If nobody else is to rep, if nobody else is there to represent us, then who else is going to do it? Like who else is going to help? Like who is going to be a part of the change? Nobody can be a part of the change if you ain't doing nothing, Issa. And you're the one person that can. You always... Uh, People, you heard the people complaining about y'all are dedicated to black people, a, a black, you know, black kids and stuff like that. But there's only one black employee. And that one black employee can help and can change things. But is she? So Issa was kind of making me mad in that sense. I was getting a little annoyed with her. But, I mean, she spoke up and said why she didn't want to be the spokesperson, but, you know, says you got to be. Speak up. So, in the next scene, Issa is, like, getting in her car or doing something. It looked like she was out in the car, but I don't know if she, I guess she did get her car back. I'm not sure. But, anyways, so, um, Issa's getting in the car or whatever, and you just see she's on the phone with Daniel, and Daniel calls her and basically says, like, oh, um, Issa's telling him like, oh, um, I, I'm, my finances are in order. I just got from meeting with my financial advisor, or Kelly or whatever. And yeah, it's not looking good for me. So I don't know how 
it's going to be a couple weeks or whatnot. And that's when Daniel goes, jumps to the conclusion and says like, oh, Vanessa's uncomfortable with you being there, blah, 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 blah. And in my head, I'm like, Vanessa ain't uncomfortable. Vanessa wants you out of her house. Like, what are you talking about, sir? I'm a little confused. Where are you getting this information from? And why are you making it up? Like, why are you lying? I didn't understand that part. Like, why was he lying? Why did he want East out? It just didn't make any sense to me. Yeah, so then... Issa gets back to work and she talks to Joanne and she just says like, oh, I think we need to hire different voices, um, blase, blase, basically hire black people, hire people of color. So that way it can be more input into the company and we can better as a company. So um, I think Joanne actually takes her into like what she's saying into consideration and she you know, hopefully is about to be about the change. Hopefully. We'll see. I feel like a black person is about to get hired. That's about to be real popping. And that's about to be like a great employee and gonna kick Issa out. <laughs> I don't know why I feel that. But that just is something I'm feeling right now that's gonna happen. So then... Issa goes home and she is cleaning up the house for Daniel. So she's making the house all nice and spiffy for Daniel. Um, because earlier that day, Kelly had told her, like, you getting over if you're not cleaning up, cooking, doing nothing for him, like, in the house. And you just staying there. Like, I would have thought she would at least been cleaning up. Like, sis, you gotta do something. Anything. You're staying in somebody else's house. But she was living her life. So... So that's when Daniel walks in and basically he's just, you know, talking about how he wanted to go to the club to go meet a new artist that he was trying to sign, well not sign, but trying to like, you know, change his music up like from be the beginning and basically the dude that he was supposed to go with flaked on him so now he can't go and he doesn't want to go by himself and he doesn't even know the dude so it would be awkward. So. Issa ends up saying, nah, I'll go with you. And I was like, oh, Lord. So him and Issa roll up to the club. They at the door. Daniel says that he got a friend that got put him on the list. He get up there. <laughs> Dude's like, what's your name? He was like, Daniel King. He was like, nah, you ain't on the list. <laughs> uh, Issa talking about, maybe it's under your producer name. <laughs> The man talking about, what's your producer name? Daniel talking about, Daniel King. I thought that was the funniest part ever. I, I had to pause it and laugh for a second because I didn't want to miss nothing. So up walks one of their friends from high school. He's like this famous producer. And um, he's like, oh, I can get you in. And Daniel's being a little prideful, like he don't want old dudes to let him in, but sorry, you need to get in the club and you need to do what you got to do. You came here for business, okay? And uh, you need to make things happen. So however you get in, you get in. So they get into the club. Dude says, you know, if you want to come by the booth later, come by, whatever, whatever. So, um, oh Lord. So they in the club and really just the whole club scene for them two was just awkward. Like it was just really awkward. I don't understand why it was so awkward. So basically what happens next? Like I was saying, the entire club scene was just super awkward and super weird. It was just, it gave us a look into how like everybody has those moments when they're awkward. Everybody, you know, it made me think of Awkward Black Girl. Like this was Awkward Black Girl and this was the show that Issa created a long time ago. And it just showcased like the weirdest thing, like the most... I remember in the beginning of her, her show, she was like, the worst thing in life to be is awkward and black. And literally, that's how I felt the whole entire time watching Daniel basically squirm. Like, 
basically basically be affected by being in that position that made him have to chase after somebody else uh, have to try to you know do business in the club and that's really an awkward place to do business like I wouldn't want to do it either but you know if if you know if I gotta do this I gotta do this so he came there on a mission Issa was literally hyping him up the whole episode like the whole time they was in the club she got him drinks she um she had snacks <laughs> she she just like always is just being Issa and just being a good friend that's really what it came down to like literally it showed the difference between his relationship with Vanessa somebody that actually didn't care about what he had going on just wanted him you know out of her house whatever whatever and it showed his relationship with Issa just somebody loving kind caring supportive you know so I really liked seeing that and I know for him he probably was like dang like I really messed up with Issa or, or I really should have let things work out better with Issa or I don't know I don't know how he feels but anyway so Issa hypes him up to finally go talk to the dude and she like literally while he's trying to talk to the dude she's distracting their friend the Khalil dude the friend from high school oh I got the hiccups I think or whatever it is um she's distracting him so that way Daniel has his opportunity to talk to the dude he wants to do music with his name is like spider so basically he not making no moves it ain't no good moves and literally um that's when the Khalil dude jumps in and he's like hey spider uh this is my friend king he's a producer too he has some good beats we used to collab a long time ago and you know you should stop by the uh studio and let me hear your beats now and he's like yeah cool you know i'll do that so you know that was really nice of the Khalil dude like if he's genuinely actually going to do that, then that's just something that doesn't happen in real life all the time. Because I feel like when people get put on and when people become famous, they don't help others out. And I mean, it's just something that happens. Like, I don't know. I mean, I know it, it, it happens. It happens all the time. But, you know. But then sometimes you need people that actually put you on and some people that help you, you know? So, whatever. So, the next scene, that's when, after he says all that, and the dude, Spider, says, oh, I'll get your info from Khalil, blah, blah, blah. Or you can get my info from Khalil after he hears your beats, whatever. He basically, like, they start shooting the club up, and then everybody has to, like, run out of there. So... Now Issa and Daniel are out to eat and they're eating and they're just talking and this was a really like vulnerable moment for Daniel where he's just telling Issa like you know old dude me and him doing the same thing and he didn't got famous and I just got good and they were talking about like how if they had got shot in that club it was just gonna be like Oh, um, unknown SoundCloud rapper or producer, good music is dead. And Issa was like, mine would have said lip driver. Mine wouldn't have been no better. At least you have a passion, you know, at least you have a dream, a goal. You're doing something. I don't even have that. And that moment, it's just like a lot of people, sorry. <laughs> A lot of people go through that like a lot of people don't know what they want to do I'm in grad school right now that doesn't mean I know what I want to do that doesn't mean I want to come out and I'm going to be set like I'm I'm already on it like I don't know 
I need some right now. Everybody's in their own lane. And when Daniel said that, Issa was like, it's not in competition with Galil. Like, y'all can help each other. And in my head, I was like, dang. Like, you know, with social media today, like, everybody's always, you know, you're comparing your life to another person's life. And you can't do that. You can't do that all the time, especially because, like, you, first of all, you don't know what's going on in somebody's life. Like, they show you what they want to show you on Instagram, to tell you the truth. But, um, it's just like, everybody finishes their race on their own time. Don't compare your lane to somebody else's lane, you know? Don't do it. Because, you know... Everyone is different, and that's something that a lot of people always have to remember. Everybody's success is different. Everybody's life is different. Everybody's interactions, everybody's experiences, everything's always going to be different. So, I thought that was a really cute lesson that I got. I mean, that I already knew, but that I got from that scene. And just being a man and being insecure, it's okay to have your insecurities you know out and the fact that he had somebody to talk to which is another thing which was really good for me so um and and some things like in the beginning it was like you also can't let pride hold you back from things either so when Issa told Daniel he was like she was like y'all can work together y'all aren't in a race like against each other y'all can work together so later on when they got back to the house um daniel daniel ended up calling um old dude khalil the producer and basically you know told him like hey can i take you up on your offer to go to the studio and dude was like yeah sure come out and so that was it and then also what else happened Daniel finally tells Issa, like, oh, you can stay as long as you want, Issa. And uh, um, she's like, thank you. And then she's sitting on the couch and she gets a call. Oh, wait, no. She, he's just like, he's like, you can stay as long as you want, Issa. It's okay. And then Issa was like, are you sure it's okay with Vanessa? And he was like, hope. Because those dude was lying like Vanessa don't care so I always spray my face that's what I'm missing real quick so like I was saying Daniel tells basically dude was lying like that's why he was like, huh? Who said what? <laughs> and so he was like, I, I handled it. I let her know and I just talked to her, whatever. So the last part was basically, Issa was sitting on the couch and she was just saying like, oh, my back hurt, this couch, oh my God. And he was like, you can sleep in my bed. I'm gonna be up working late. And in my head, I was like, girl, this gonna start something. I'm ready for it. I am ready for it okay so last part last thing that was said anything um Issa gets a call from the property manager company or whatever and they're basically like oh we would like you to come in we're interested in you coming to get this job you can have an interview blah 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 Issa's smiling Daniel's like what's up she's like hey um nothing I'm just gonna stay up I'm not tired and she goes to sit by him and she stays up with him while they listen to beats and stuff so yeah that was the episode and i'm finished with my makeup on time you know wish pop and wish good <laughs> so um i really enjoyed the episode um like i said it really was a look into daniel and his insecurities and it just showed us like everybody is different everybody has their moments when they're insecure everybody has their moments when they're unsure about what their next step is everybody is has their moments where they're tired of working on something over and over and over and over again and they want to give up because they haven't made any progress with it 
or they haven't got where they should be or where they think they should go, you know, like Daniel is with his producing career or whatever. He's not famous yet, but it's like you got to keep going. And when somebody offers you help, take it. Like, don't be too prideful. Don't be jealous of the next person. Don't, you know, I don't know. I just, I just felt like that was just so relatable. And for it to come from someone that just came off as like a super duper strong individual, just really changed the game of Insecure and like the episode and just changed my viewpoint of Daniel completely. So yeah, I, I really love this episode. I really love this episode. I thought it was really good. Um, and I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And Queen Beauty out.